Northwest Outdoorsman is presented by WorkSharp. Got him. Got him. This week on the Northwest Outdoorsman. Oh, he's on. He's on. This is a good one, too. We are fishing for trophy kokanee in the southern caribou region. Well, they're all over the water column today. That's actually a nice one. That's a nicer fish. I would hide the camera. Hang on, Mark. <laughs> the Northwest Outdoorsman, presented by WorkSharp, is brought to you by Max Lure, Whitewater Lodge, Lodestar Outfitters, Procure Bait Sense, Valley Marine, Micklich. Kokanee fishing has become a favorite outdoor activity for the Northwest Outdoorsman. The chance to catch big fish and the wonderful table fare make kokanee fishing a near obsession. Bob Loomis and Rich Harrod travel to the Caribou in British Columbia to fish with their good friend Mark Roseboom. Mark introduces the guys to Ruth Lake and the beautiful fish these waters hold. The fishing is hot and so is the weather. Well, maybe not always. Oh my goodness. Uh, we, we almost bought them. Mark invited us up again to go fish uh, you know, another lake. It's not like there's just one or two lakes up in the Caribou. I mean, holy cow. There's a lake every other, every other corner up there. Well, I always look forward to fishing with Mark. You know, he's become a really good friend over the past couple of years. And so when he invited us up to fish at Ruth Lake, man, I was excited. Uh, such a great area and uh, so little pressure to be honest and uh, these lakes uh, these lakes have some of the best fish in BC has to offer and it's deep back here on the back end it was a perfect day to get going ready ready did you spray deep in my boat hmm? <laughs> yeah not not on any of your stuff excited. It was a perfect day to get going. You gonna put out a, uh, a trout rod? We can do a long line for trout, yeah. Most of everything that we had was really geared around the trout fishery. It's only 25 feet here. I really like that, I just put that on there. It's What's that? The rocket launcher. Oh yeah? Small fish. You wanna let that one go? Yeah. Okay. Right off the bat, like I said, we started with greens and blacks and things like that geared towards the rainbows. Uh, we caught a couple fish and then it just kind of shut down. We're at about that transition time where we start switching from the pinks and the oranges and start mm -hmm. going to right. So the chartreuse and Purple's been a good color. Well, that's what I caught that first fish on, was that purple and pink one. Bop, bop. This is a better fish. Yeah, better fish. Not quite yet. Gorgeous fish, gee, like Christmas Eve. I've caught a lot of big rainbows on pinks, hot oranges, so I just went to total kokanee gear. We get a huge kokanee. We get one of these, you know, 17 inch, uh, two and a half pound kokanee. And I'm looking at that going, that's it. So much for the rainbows. What you got on this one? I just put on a big six inch blade with that new squitter. Nice fish. Reel up one more time. Yeah, it worked out good. Started working some different colors, different depths. We got fish. Okay. He popped that thing off the downrigger and came straight up. 
far back are you yet? Well, I'm back still 30 feet. That's a good fish. Hang on. Good job. Yeah, some of the greens that we started out with, you know, for rainbows and stuff, different colors at different times of the day, how your sun is, how, you know, the clarity of the water, the temperature of the water, the thermal climate that those fish are on, all of that makes a huge difference on, on what they see. Thank you. Well, they're all over the water column today. Like they're, they're anywhere here from bottom all right up to five feet under the surface. Coming up after the break. That's two on the coconut. That's actually a nice one. Though. The Northwest Outdoorsman presented by WorkSharp is brought to you by Max Lure, Whitewater Lodge, Lodestar Outfitters, Procure Bait Sense, Valley Marine, Micklich. Welcome back to Ruth Lake. Nice job, man. Thank you. Well, they're all over the water column today. Like they're they're anywhere here from bottom all right up to five feet under the surface. I like the back there. There's. Uh... Uh, no houses on it. It's just a little deeper water, and we ended up working those those choke points, so to speak, on the lake where uh, where the food and the wind was blowing. And right up on surface over there too, eh? Oh, never mind. Perfect. We went back to the back of the lake where it started getting a little bit more shallow, getting up in that 35, 40 foot range. We caught a whole bunch of small fish. You know, and when I say small fish, you know, you're talking 12 to, 12 to 14 inch kokanee. Every other fish was a rainbow. I got that one. I don't know, now it's peeling line. Small guy? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna keep going and get my rod out. Bye bye fish. Nice. Yeah. Pretty fish, really pretty. Hey, you know what, it worked. Hey, by the way, there's fish here. He's just trying to decide which one he's gonna go and eat. That thermocline looks to be at about 35 feet there, eh, Bob? You got kokanee driving down on you like crazy. <laughs> we run a Garmin unit. It has panoptics on it, and it's just amazing because you get to see the fish's reaction to the boat going over them, to the gear. Full school, 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 30 feet. At 30? Yep. Just going crazy there. We'll keep that one. Okay. That's two on the coconut. Look at the color on that guy. And we started playing with colors. One works good, one doesn't. And you could never come up with any type of pattern of what one thing was really working very well. Another 10 or 10 feet. Nothing, no. Now it, it wasn't a fish. I mean, there's just no way. But it, it looked like the ball. You know how when the ball drags on the bottom? <laughs> Remember Danny on bridge that first time? Yeah, oh Fishing yeah. that humdinger and the rod's just barely, I'm oh. like, no. Bite was fairly steady throughout the morning, and so we all got into some really good fishing. And when I was playing fish, Mark picked up the camera. But I'm not sure Mark's destined to be a cameraman. You need, need net? What you got there, Richie? <laughs> <laughs> Hey Richie, what you got? That's actually a nice one. That's a nicer fish. <laughs> that was a little bit better. <laughs> we did catch that fish. <laughs> that's, too, that's too funny. 
Um, your bed. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, that's a nicer fish. Okay. We picked up a few fish on some other colors and other combinations. It ended up being that chartreuse with the, the pink and purple splatter back. Uh, shorter leaders than maybe we normally run on a wiggle hoochie. We're anywhere from 14 to 16 inches, somewhere in there. Nice. That's a good, good one. job. I took the clear bill out of the pink spatterback wiggle hoochie and put in the chartreuse bill that we made. You know, is what you've got is you've got that contrast of that, that hot pink and that uh, high UV green or the chartreuse. When you get into that clarity, that pink and chartreuse works really well. We finally got into a, a little bit bigger fish. We've been catching a lot of, a lot of small ones throughout the day, but uh, we now got into a, a bigger batch of fish here. Oh, we're, we're missing Danny. Yeah. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, now it's uh -oh. really bad. Uh -oh. Oh, What's our depth here? Uh, 32 feet. Oh, that's not good. Oh, boy. Um, Don't do that. Nice fish. Got it. Take that. Coming up after the break. That's a good fish. Nice fish. The Northwest Outdoorsman presented by WorkSharp is brought to you by Max Lure, Whitewater Lodge, Lodestar Outfitters, Procure Bait Sense, Valley Marine, Micklich. Welcome back. Big kokanee are coming over the rail. Nice. We finally got into a, a little bit bigger fish. We've been catching a lot of, a lot of small ones. Oh, we're we're missing Danny. <laughs> yeah. Uh oh. Uh oh. Now it's uh -oh. really bad. Uh -oh. Oh, What's God. our depth here? Uh, Thirty-two feet. Oh, that's not good. Oh boy. Um. Don't do that. Nice fish. You got it. Take that. That's a good fish. Nice fish. Good fish yeah. You want to hold it sideways? <laughs> That's a good fish. How long is your leader? Too long. So uh, you're not catching any fish. I'm anymore. not getting bit right now. I should be getting bit. <laughs> no, 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 no. It, it is. It's you know like this. Well, I had to give Bobby a hard time. That's just part of the deal. You know, he and I fished together for a long time. So if I don't rouse him, it's just not right. Top rod. Top rod. Is that the one with the long leader? Yes, this one has actually a really long leader on it. So I've got hope for the other one. It's a little one. A little fish. This is skipper. This is what we call skippies. Yep, a little fish. You know, Mark is a great host, and I always look forward to staying at his house at evenings where we cook good food and we sit around and laugh and, and just enjoy each other's company. We made dinner really quick, sat around and retied gear and moved a bunch of stuff over to the yellow chartreuse and hot pink, built a few, uh, few more parts, and uh, got things ready to go for the next morning. We, we knew there was some weather possibly coming through the caribou and we saw it on the radar so we brought our rain gear and went back it was uh, a little bit of rain on the way out there i'm right in the cookie jar well that previous day was a beautiful day the sun was out but boy that next morning we woke up it was totally different you're going pink chartreuse bill right mm -hmm. okay if you want something else on here put it on now we started fishing and we got in a little bit of a caribou rainstorm there. Fish all over us. Yeah. I'll just do a circle over here a little bit and then we'll just come back along this side and work our way down. It's raining outside and, and I'm going, great. This is what we need, you know, a front going through. It's typical caribou, you know. One day it rains, the next day it's bright sunshine and that's exactly what we got. Small.
Little Coke. <laughs> Licking. Did you get him? Yep. Yeah. Really didn't get anything going. We got several small fish again. He just didn't want to stay with it. He was he was a non-happy camper. I'm telling you what, I have to set the hook. You want to borrow that stiffer rod up there? <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> it just jerked or lift right off. <laughs> That's what we need to do, put two double Ds like that back to back and see what kind of action they got. Dink. Uh, maybe a little bit better. <laughs> I don't think it's a, a really big, big fish, but... Oh. We caught fish uh, throughout the morning, just here and there. I got, I got the big guys. You going for big fish? I'm going for five in a row is what I'm going for. <laughs> we hadn't caught a decent rainbow, which I was very surprised. We weren't fishing where rainbows were. We needed to fish shallower water, you know, uh, longer setbacks. We were fishing for coconut. Anyhow, I finally get bit and get a decent rainbow. Oh, he's a little bigger than I thought. It's a rainbow. Rainbow. Coming up after the break. That's a good fish. I was, re I was reeling it up. Uh-oh. Those are big. This, hang on, Mark. <laughs> the Northwest Outdoorsman, presented by WorkSharp, is brought to you by Max Lure, Whitewater Lodge, Lodestar Outfitters, Procure Bait Sense, Valley Marine, Micklich. Welcome back. The weather hasn't dampened the bite. Oh, he's a little bigger than I thought. It's a rainbow. Rainbow. Anyhow, I finally get bit and get a decent rainbow. It was probably 18 inches, I want to guess, you know, somewhere around there. A decent sized fish. Throw it in the box. Er. <laughs> <laughs> Bobby's throwing the fish around again. Got it. You get him? Yeah. Nope, mine's gone. Good job. And it was just kind of a matter of finding where those bigger year class fish were compared to what we were catching. Yeah, nice fish. It's small things that come, that play a part. And just because there's weather doesn't mean the fishing isn't worthwhile going out. The fish. That's a good one too. <laughs> Pop the heavy clip. Yeah. We're back in the game. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and that's just part of the fun, razzing each other. It just uh, makes the trip more enjoyable. <laughs> That's a coconut too. Yeah, it is. On the trout gear. I was, re I was reeling it up. <laughs> nice fish. What do you got going, Rich? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Nice job. Good fish. And then all of a sudden, a storm started brewing in the distance and it came over us and I had to put the camera away. It was raining so hard. And... Yep. 
Uh, it was a little bit wet. The bilge pump was working. <laughs> when people say that it rains sometimes, it rained. It wasn't just rain, it was rain. Anybody steering? Hey, this thing's not working. It turned off, Mark. Hang on, Mark. Now, okay. That is a nice fish. Bobby and I found that 26 feet was really working well for us. Every time we put down, it seems like that's right where we're getting bit. And Mark was just being stubborn about it, and so he just wouldn't go to exactly 26 feet. So what depth are you at, Mark? 25 and a quarter. You lied, <laughs> Zach. You know, it's only taken him two days to figure that out. I love fish. <laughs> Love fishing. Oh, it was a fantastic time. We have a lot of fun uh, with him. Well, as usual, we just had a great time fishing with Mark. You know, it was fun. We had, we had a great time. Always do. Always have a good time. It's now time for another Harrods Cookhouse recipe brought to you by Micklitz, the Spokane Spice Company since 1948. Today we are making creamy Tuscan kokanee. Start by skinning and deboning kokanee, then cut into three to four inch pieces. Fry kokanee pieces in hot oiled pan and season with salt and pepper. While waiting, chop one small onion, fresh basil and rosemary. Turn fish and season the other side. Remove when cooked through. Add a pat of butter to pan and saute onion and garlic until clear. Add white wine and reduce slightly. Then add sun-dried tomatoes and fresh herbs. Saute for two minutes. Add half and half and Harrods Cookhouse Parmesan fish seasoning and heat until bubbling. Wilt spinach in the sauce and return fish, coating each piece in sauce. Serve with your favorite side and enjoy. For this and other great wild game recipes, visit the Herod Outdoors website and YouTube channel. There was a little bit of lightning and thunder, but it wasn't really right at us at that point. And then uh, we had a lightning strike hit a little close to the boat and uh, Richie and Bobby were laying on the floor. I was looking down at them thinking, what are you guys doing? It's just a lightning strike. We got rods sticking out the front of the boat and everything, you know, and uh, yeah, I think it, uh, Tested your guys' hearts a little bit. 